Okay, then we can start. Um, so I was, as I was telling before, we will now repeat the session from Wednesday about um, analyzing time series data in GRASS.js for environmental monitoring. Um, the kind of theory part I already presented the other day on Wednesday in the morning, so I don't think we need to like waste time with that. Uh, and so we just move into, into the hands-on session. Okay, I will be going through the script uh, and explaining how it works, what does it mean, and so on. So you can just follow. Okay, so what you um, need to do is go to the, um, so the presentation is here in my GitHub account. I will paste it. Okay, so you go there. And the presentation is the same as Wednesday. And would you need to download, please? I guess maybe you already did. Um, <clears throat> is uh, the data, which is a re uh, ready-to-use location. And we will use uh, a grass script and an R script, but I didn't put it here. But anyway, when we reach that step, we, you can download it. It's super small. Okay. And this location is just a zip file. Okay, it's called NC Basic Open Geo Hub 2019. And you uh, unzip it within your grass data. Okay, so does anyone, does anyone knows what the grass data is? Does everyone know what the grass data is at this point? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So please, if you haven't done it yet, please do that. <clears throat> and in the end, your grass data should look something like I will show you. Okay, oh, two. So you will have your grass data in your home or under documents or something. You have to have a folder, the location that you unzipped, NC Basic Open Geohub 2019, and within the location you will see four map sets. Okay? Please let me know if you are following. Okay, and so we will start in Modis LST map set. Okay, yeah. You, you, did you download the data? Yes. Okay, so in documents or somewhere? Yes, this one. Uh, this one. Yep. Okay, that's the location, but we need to put it, go w one level up, please. Um, create somewhere, okay, if you want, you, uh, no. We need to avoid spaces in, in directories, otherwise that won't work. So please put it maybe in open, open GeoHub. No, 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 don't change that name, please. Create, go there, open GeoHub. This one? Yes, and create a, uh, a folder called grass data. Okay, and now? And now we pick this. And now you pick this one and put it inside the grass data. There, there, okay, and now start grass. Ah, it will take some time to copy. Oh no! Wait! No! 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 This grass is super old. Seven is four is six four. We are using seven six. This won't work because this one does not have support for temporal time series for temporal 
uh, framework. Mm -hmm. It's only starting in seven. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, you need to, okay, it was written in the instructions. You need to get at least seven four. Uh, you can see here, software required. Uh, I don't think so. It will, um, it opens a new presentation, okay, and you have to download this installer with, and you run it with administrator privileges and then you follow all these steps to install. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, but that won't work. <laughs> that is too old grass version. Okay. Um, I continue so we can move on. So everyone is settled with the data except for, yeah, no? Uh, is it the same if I start grass from the menu, from the start menu, or do I need to embed a static from the shell? No, it's the same, the same. it's yeah. the same, yeah. Uh, the thing is I have many installations, mm. uh, and so I, yeah. I need to pick the one. <laughs> Uh, let me go in this. Yeah, today I'm alone. The other day, uh, Marcus was there helping. <laughs> I mean, I, I tried to open it, but from the start menu, but it do, does not show up. And but, uh, like I okay, but that's it. already, com that's compressed, no? So it, it won't read anything. Okay, this is yeah, compressed. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> what we need to create is here, uh, a new new folder. Mm -hmm. Please name it Grass Data. Okay. And now you, uh, where was it? This here. One here. Yeah. This one. You uh, extract files. I always do extract here. Yeah, okay, you can extract here and then copy. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and the thing is, okay, yes, this one we copy. Uh, no, is that yeah, control? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a little bit confusing. <laughs> <laughs> and go to grass data okay. there, yeah. okay, and paste. Good, and only when, when this is done, you can start grass, mm -hmm. and you will have to browse yeah. where the grass data is. Mm -hmm. And once you browse there in the first line, then you will see the location and the map set. Yeah, so now sorry. start grass. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, so here yeah. you search for whatever you put the grass yeah, data yeah, folder. Yeah. Summer school. Yeah. And it's out there. Okay, there. Done. Okay. Yeah. Done. And we will start in Modis LST. So Yes, and start. OK. Let's start. Thanks for the assistant, <laughs> for the assistance. <laughs> OK. Um, then we skip. <clears throat> so what we will do today uh, first, I will tell you a bit about the data, um, and we will go through the workflow that we saw here, okay? We will go more or less through this workflow uh, to understand and to learn all the commands or most of the commands in the temporal framework of Grass GIS. So, um, we will first create a time series and register maps there. Uh, this register maps means actually assign timestamps to maps, okay? And there, then we have the reference of the date, okay? Then since the data is in Kelvin degrees, we will convert to Celsius degrees just to have a better feeling of the data we are working with. We will do some temporal operations. For example, uh, 
get the maximum LST of all the series and the minimum LST of all the series and know and then get when is that this maximum happened. So to get the date, okay, that's another temporal operation. We will go through different types of temporal aggregations, yeah, like the full series or with granularity or climatology like aggregation, like this um, long-term average, averages that are usually called. Uh, we will also estimate anomalies, standardized anomalies, and we will use, um, we will follow an example based on the surface heat urban island, surface urban heat island, <laughs> um, to extract zonal statistics for a time series and compared it from an uh, urban area and compare it with this LST in the surroundings of an urban area, okay? And from there, we will move to R and we will just do some plotting in R, okay? So for those, those that didn't take the lesson from yesterday, you can still see a little bit of how to connect grass and R, okay? Um, good. So then, you, if you are all set, this we can skip. I tell you a little bit about the data. Um, it comes from mod 11 B3, B3 product, collection six. Um, it's a tiled monthly composite, and there you have the number of the tile that we are using for the state of North Carolina, covering the state of North Carolina. It has a special resolution of 5.6 kilometers, and the time period that, uh, that was selected for this exercise is a three years period, okay, from 15 to 17. This is how the tile looks like. No? It comes from a sinusoidal projection because all modest tile products are in sinusoidal projection, and then <clears throat> I projected for you into the um, the projection for North Carolina, I don't remember. <laughs> okay, we can check when we start grass. Uh, this, so, so, let's start. <clears throat> uh, I move from here. Okay, so we start in Modis LST map set. Okay. Hola. Hey. There you go. Whew. So let's start first displaying one map and checking some basic info of the location. So to display one map easily in the GUI, we go to this data tab, okay, down there to this data tab, and you will find there all the list of maps. Uh, okay, since I already ran this workshop once, I have all the maps from the previous session. You will see maybe only this, okay? So just pick one, double click, and it will be displayed. Let me do something first. R mask minus R. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Yep. the map set, yeah. just exit and start again. Start yeah. Or, you, I mean, just to avoid confusion. Otherwise, what you can do is just change map set. In which map set did you start? Mm, think, uh, but you started in the one, in the correct one. Look, correct there. One? Yes, you can see Modis LST there. Oh. So you are in the right map set. Okay, because the ones you are displaying there was different. I thought it was... Oh, no. Okay. 
No, no, don't worry. It's fine. Okay. So we display the map set. If we want to get some info about the location, what we can do is go here. So I didn't remember the projection of this North Carolina system location. So we go to settings in the main menu, settings, map projections, display map projection. Okay, and there we get, ooh, it looks super. I hope you can see it in your screens, but then we see slumber conformal conic projection, okay? So from sinusoidal, I reprojected to lumbar conformal conic, okay? And import it into grass. Good. <clears throat> now, let's display a vector map. So again, we go to data. <clears throat> now we go to permanent here, you see, vector. And we will use NC state. Double click. <laughs> okay. So remember one of the basic concepts in, in GRASS-GIS? Those of you that did the basic uh, intro, do you remember the basic concepts? Yeah, the bounding box that we call computational region. Good. And it's defined by the bounding box and what else? It affects only raster data. Resolution. Perfect. Okay. So we don't want to process the whole tile, but we are just interested in a bounding box covering the state of North Carolina. Okay? So... An easy way to do that is go to layers, to the top layers down there, where you have the list of maps that you are displaying. Okay, right click. Ah, thank you, yeah. Thank you. Uh, right click, and we set the computational region from selected map. Okay, this is one way of doing it. And it okay. And you should be seeing something like this. If you don't see the red square, which is the like the computational region how you set it, you go here. You see in here in okay. Do you see it? <laughs> here. And just check for Show computational region stand. And then you will get the, the red square, okay? Now, the only problem with what we did is that the resolution might not be aligned with the raster we are using underneath. Because we just, when we set the region to a vector, we are setting the bounding box. But we don't know if that bounding box is splitting pixels in a half, for example. And we really want that all our output uh, rasters are aligned with our input rasters, okay? So what we need to do <clears throat> is to align with a raster map, okay? So, in this command, we do everything with one step. We set the region to the boundary, the bounding box of this vector, and we align the resolution of the region to one of our input rasters, okay? So, if you open the code, it is all there. Okay, 
So we run this command. For those of you Windows users, just remove this. Okay, this backslash, remove it. <clears throat> Sorry? The code, there was the link in the presentation. Uh, no, where was it? Here. That's a link. This, where you down or or in the Open GeoHub agenda, there's also a link for the code. Like you go here. Give me one second. So here. <clears throat> so what you need to remove all from now on, if you are in Windows, is this. I just put them because in Linux they are accepted, recognized, and it makes the presentation a bit more like order. Otherwise I have like long, long, long lines. I just showed, go to the agenda and there you have the link. Ah, it's not this one. Sorry, this is my mistake. Go to the one on this one. Here. Ah, sorry, this is Wednesday, September 4. LST time series. So we set the region, and as you can see, we have here information about the projection, information about the bounding box, the resolution, and the number of row, columns, and cells. Okay, so from now on, all our rasters that we process will be um, kind of cut <laughs> to that region, and they will have this resolution, okay? But now, there's one more thing we want to do because, okay, now we have the region, but we are not interested in this part. I just want to have information about the North Carolina state only. So what we need to do is to set up a mask, okay, to apply a mask. And that was in another of the basic concepts in GRASS, uh, that the mask, masks are just uh, like virtual. Okay, we don't need to, to clip our rasters with a map, with a mask, but we just apply it virtually. And only when we are running processes, this mask is really applied. Okay? And so our output maps will have this no data where the mask is. Yeah? So to apply the mask, <clears throat> we will use the again the NC state vector, okay? And we run the command rmask. Okay, and now in the terminal we can see that uh, we get a message, like all subsequent processes or operations will be affected by this mask. And if you keep doing like enter in the terminal, you will see that you are always notified that there's a raster mask applied. Okay, so you don't forget it. <clears throat> and now, please re-render, yeah, one second. Please re-render this, the map, and you will see that the mask is applied. Okay, so we can remove this one. So now we are ready to start working, okay? We have our region to the boundaries of the vector and we have a mask. Yeah, Julia? Um, if I had a raster that was having a higher resolution and a wide resolution, do I need to 
Yeah, yeah. Um, if you have, let's say you have a 30 meter resolution Landsat image, but you want it in, I don't know, 300 meter, the easiest that you can do is um, just change the resolution in the region. And what you will get by default is an aggregation by the mean, okay, to then get your pixels, your 30 by 30 into 300 by 300. If you want something else as a resampling method, then there are specific modules to do so. And one of them to go from, let's say, um, high resolution to low resolution, would, uh, it's called R resamp stats. And so you could do either an average or the minimum or the maximum or the median or something like that. And to go the other way around, there are also different uh, modules, okay? There are like uh, re R resample, B splines, and different things, okay? To go to lower, no, higher resolution. In terms of speed, it's the same. It's yeah. The original one is high resolution. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty fast. If you, and if you go the other way around, say you have a 300, meter pixel and you want something at 30 meter, you also you change the region, but by default what you get without doing your own uh, interpolations or applying a different algorithm for interpolations for downscaling, you get nearest neighbor. So basically the values are repeated in all the pixels within a 1300 meter pixel, okay? Okay, so let's start with the time now. Uh, presentation. So we are set with the basic uh, settings. We set our region, we set our masks. Okay, let's go now to the creation of a time series. Okay, remember this workflow we were speaking about. So to create a time series, we use this command to create. And what basically what it does is to create an SQLite container table, yeah, where we will put our time stamped maps. Okay. So this is just the creation of a table, okay, in the temporal database. And for this, we need to specify the type of maps that we will use, the type of time series that we will create, if it is raster, raster 3D, or vector, and the type of time that these uh, maps will have, okay? If it is absolute or relative, yeah? Do you remember what the difference was between absolute and relative time? <laughs> yes, tell me. Yeah, the difference Yeah, relative is just whatever interval of time the the maps represent and absolute is the Gregorian calendar kind of dates, okay? And the minimum resolution minimum temporal resolution that the that grass the T grass uh, can handle is one second. So we could be able to timestamp time stamp maps with differences of one second, okay? That's the smaller uh, time unit. Okay, so the command looks like this. T create, the type of time series that we will create. Remember this is space, time, raster, data set which temporal type, it will be absolute. And then we have to put a name to that table, okay, to that time series. So LST day monthly. And then we add two more uh, lines with metadata. One is the title for that uh, time series, and one is a description, okay? Because then when we have a lot of time series and maybe they are named similar <laughs> and we forget, 
we can get this information, okay? We can retrieve this information, yeah. Yes, please. Eh? In Windows, yes. I mean, you can try. If you get an error, then it's that you have to remove it. If you don't get errors, then maybe it works. Because also with different Windows versions, it changes. So, Okay, let's then create our time series. I will just do a small hack here. Export. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, since for me this time series existed already, I just get a warning saying, hey, I'm, over I'm overwriting, okay? <clears throat> Now let's do a T list just to see. Oh, I have a lot. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's what the was the problem over there. Uh, just go. Yeah, just just go here in the look, presentation of Wednesday. There you have the LST. Yeah, sorry, because my plan at the beginning was to do a different session, but then it was like, no, we should repeat the sessions, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just tell me when you are settled and so you can follow. Ready? <clears throat> It's, it's an empty yeah. it's an empty table okay so let's do a t info <clears throat> okay and so we see that it's there's nothing there no we only have like the creation information who created it in which map set and so on but then there's nothing like no information about the time, no information about spatial extent, no metadata. It's just the name of the table. And this is the name of the table that we just created. It gets something like auto-generated like this, okay? <clears throat> and we get here, you see like the kind of the, the history of this time series. You get the title, the description, and then the history. So if we keep doing things to this time series, we will get all the history here of the commands that we do, that we use. <clears throat> so, to remove a mask, you use r mask minus r for removing. But in any case, it's, it was just the same mask, so you can... Well, I, I started with a different mask, but with a different mask. Okay. Uh, in, uh, okay. okay. Good. And so, <clears throat> now let's, let's really add something to that time series, okay? It's just empty now. The table is empty, now let's add the maps there. 
okay? And this is in grass terminology, we call it register maps there, okay? Add timestamps to maps. <clears throat> so, um, in Linux-based or Unix-based systems, we can use like one command inside the other, okay, like this. So those of you running some uh, either Mac or Linux, you can do this. So what we do is call glist with a pattern and with a separator. And then the, this command is run first and it puts here the list of maps separated by comma and it will register all those maps in the time series in the table that we just created. And the other things that we need to provide is the start time, okay? When does the time series start? And which is the increment, okay? In this case, we are working with monthly data, then the increment is one month, okay? And since we provide the list, it will assign the first date to the first map, and then it will keep incrementing by one month until the list finishes. Well, then you have different options to register maps in a time series. And one of them is providing yourself the list of maps and two more columns or one more column, depending which data you have, with the start time and the end time. So that allows that you have time gaps, for example, in the time series, okay? So this case is very easy because it's regular and we just add an increment. But when you don't have that or when it's not that clear, then you have, it's better to just provide a file, a text file, with start time and end time. Yes. Okay. Um, for Windows users, you cannot do this, but it's very easy. You just run first the list and you save it in a file and then you pass that file. Okay, but it's, that's the only change. Just run this. So you create first the list. This will give you a list of maps, the same that you will get here, but in a file, in a CSV file, in a TXT file, and you pass it here in this parameter. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, so this is one way of doing it. The other way is uh, if you don't want, to, if you just want your maps to have a timestamp, but you don't want them yet in a time series, um, what you do is you don't pass the input here. And so if you don't pass any table where to register the maps, they are just registered in the temporal database of, of GRASS. And then, if you then want to put them in different time series, since the maps will have already a timestamp, you can just list the maps, because then it will automatically read the timestamp that they have. Um, you can use TList and you ask instead of, uh, so, T list, minus minus help, okay? And you can see here that you can list either space time raster data sets or the, like space time data sets, or you can list maps, okay? 
And so what you do is to list maps that are registered in the temporal database, you use type equal raster, for example. Okay? So let's do that and delist. Oh, type raster. Okay? And here we have all the maps that I have listed in the in the temporal database. Okay? Good. So we create the time series and now let's ask for info again. Let, uh, let one second. I go. Okay. Now we have data. Okay. Now that we we run the t register command, now everything is like auto completed. Okay. We have information about the time. So the granularity is one month. It's interval data. We have the spatial extent. We have the resolution and the metadata. And we know that there are 36 maps registered. Okay. Um, did, ah, okay. If you are on Windows, you don't have permission to write on your C disk. Great. So what you have to do here, here, do you see the mouse? You have to put the complete path. So you have to write in your computer the the path to that file, like user, documents, blah, blah. Okay? And the same when you will be reading files. <clears throat> um, the other thing we can do after we added maps into the time series is to list them. So what we use is this trust list, and we pass the name of the time series, and we get the map, all the maps, the map set where they, they are, and the start and end time. Okay? And so here it's very clear that this is an open interval here. It's closed at the beginning and open at the end. Okay? Because this date is the same as this one. Okay? If we had, instead of interval time, we would have instance like time instances, this column would be non, 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 okay? <clears throat> uh, presentation, where are you? Here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this I already explained. The other thing that we can do is um, list some of the variables in this table, in this, in this SQLite table. For example, the minimum and maximum value of each map. So by default, this TRAST list give, gives us the maps and the start and end time. But we can change that, and we can list, for example, like here, name and mean and max. Okay, and so here we have the minimum maximum value for each map in the time series. Okay, and you can see here that these are uh, LST, but we have them in Kelvin multiplied by 50. So it's a bit difficult to get a sense of what we are talking about. So the next step, it's very, I mean, this... Um, this type of data is very convenient to store the maps because it's integer and it's, it occupies less space. But then to get a better feeling, we convert them into Celsius degrees, okay? So that's the next step. <clears throat> <clears throat> and for this, we will use this TRUST algebra command Yep. Yeah. 
fertilis. Hey, wait, one second. Yes. And that's an empty container. Yes. Okay, and then uh, And then you pass the list of maps. So you have the option of passing either the list of maps like comma separated maps. Mm -hmm. Okay? But then when you have like thousands of maps, then you reach the limit of number of files like because of the operat operative system, you reach a limit. And then you have the option of, in, instead of passing a list of maps, comma separated list of maps, you can use a parameter called file, and there you just pass a CSV uh, with all the map names. Yes, and th this will give us an order list of maps. No, this is something you provide to the command, to T-register. Ah, okay, so I tell them, so in my file list, the first Ex one is that. Exactly, and then keep incrementing by one month until the list is finished, no? So I make sure that my file list is... Is ordered, of course, okay. yes, yeah. yeah. If it is not ordered or if, if it has gaps, what you do is, instead of using these uh, options, in the option file, you just pass the list of maps with the dates. And then it will be ordered by the command, okay? Because it will be ordered by date. Yes, so here I can run the gbit command just to, to see. Yes, sure exactly. Right yes, I put it here because it's like I, I save one step, no? But ah, okay, so you could save it like in a variable and then pass the variable. Yes, exactly. So I can show you just for you to be sure. Uh, for a better view, we used the new line separator instead of comma, just for a better view now. But the command needs it uh, commas, um, yeah, comma separated. So like this, okay. And since Modis has this information in the file name, okay, so you have always the year and the doi, the day of year. And so it's ordered, okay? In some other cases, when they do not use doi, and for example, put just one, 32, 60, then you get a mess. Because since the number of characters is not the same, then the order is just a mess, okay? Yes, just because you cannot use this one command inside the other. Okay, so let's go to we, to the algebra part. This command um, is super powerful. We will use it a bit lightly <laughs> here. Those of you that were here yesterday know that we can do a lot of things with the algebra. Uh, but in this case, we will just use it to convert from Kelvin to Celsius. So uh, just a simple operation between a time series and just scalars, okay? But this command performs a wide range of temporal and spatial operations, and it is based on temporal and spatial topology. And it has opera temporal operators such as union, intersection, uh, and things like that, different temporal functions like start time, start day of the year, start month, and so on, that we will also use. Uh, it has a spatial operations, the operators that are a subset of the map calculator in GRASS, okay? These are links, so you can check which operators and which functions are available in these modules. Then we also have this uh, neighborhood modifier. So we could be able to create space-time filters, for example, okay, in a time series, and other temporal functions like snapping, buffering, or shifting the time, okay? 
and they can all be combined in super complex <laughs> expressions. Okay? Some sense of it we got yesterday when we were estimated consecutive numbers of days with temperature higher than 30. Okay? But it's super powerful, but you get it in just one line. Okay? Um, okay, this is uh, in grass, all the operations will be always by pixel, okay? And what you pass to the algebra is the time series. And by default, it will follow like every pixel, like in space and in time. Yes, for that you can use the, temp the neighborhood modifier. And that's what we did yesterday with these consecutive days. So you check that the day before and the day after have the same temperature and then you add one. Yeah, yeah, you add the X, you have X, Y, and T. So it's a space-time modifier. Yeah, so you can check in the surroundings, in space and time. Day, yeah. So this is the windows. Should I put it like uh, the same or? Yes, just the same. But it doesn't. Yeah, because um, you have to remove the. Yeah, I, I remove. No, but here no, because it's being taken like in different, in different lines. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And so that's why that's why it's not created. Yeah, you. So let, let me to do something. I'll just show you the kind of. Oh no. This is the code anyway. Yeah. Here you also have to provide the path. Oh, okay. Oh, where? In the file list. Oh, okay. Where this? The one that you created with glist, then you have to provide the path here. Otherwise, it won't read it. It's the same. So in Windows, you always have to provide the path. In Linux, it, you are working in, in a directory. So it's usually, if you do print working directory, PWD, you know where you are. And all the files, like the text files and things like that, will be, or the PNG that you save, they will be saved there. And you can change directory if you want. One second. I show you this. So you can just, if I do print, Print working directory. I know where I am, okay? I'm in home. And I can change to documents if I want. CD, documents. And now I'm in documents. And all the files, that, text files or images that are saved, they will be saved there, okay? But in Windows, you have to provide everything. All the path, you don't have, access, you don't have rights to write on the C disk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were asking something. How can you? Of the working directory. Yeah, you have to remove, go to the code. You are, it seems that you are not removing the backslash. This, the code is here. You have to remove this backslash. Not, not well, okay, all of them. Oh, this one. Yeah, every, every time you have to remove them and create one liner. Okay. In Windows, it's not recognized. Okay. So this is the very simple operation that we will do with the superpower al algebra. <clears throat> we will just convert from Kelvin uh, it's Kelvin by, by 50 to Celsius, okay? 
So we multiply by 0 0.02, and then we subtract 273.15. Yep. Yes. Hey, you didn't lead, <laughs> let me arrive to that. Yes. This one, suffix, it's not available for 7.4. And then you should remove this one. Just this. Suffix equal grand, just remove. Um, what this creates, um, I, sh I run it and I show you. It's easier to. Uh, here. Okay. So, and then I do the Rust list. This. So you see what I get. The 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 names of the maps plus a granularity. Okay. So I get the the month. Okay, for those months. Uh, and in, t in 7 4, this was not there. And so, what you will get if you do TRAS list, I think it is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You don't have the plea. Okay. Um, if you install like standalone installer or through the OS Geo for Windows, uh, your Linux, then pip install plea. Uh, I think it. I think it is with cops. Um, this should work. Pip install. Uh, I think it was like that. That should work. It should work in Linux in Windows as well. So in the manual page, we added that. OK, look, for Ubuntu Debian, it's called Python Plea. In Fedora, it's also Python Plea. And for Windows, if you install with OSGEO for Windows, it's Python pip install plea. I don't know in Mac, but no, ah, you're running Linux. Okay, good. You have to install the dependencies first. Yeah, I mean, I com I compiled. Uh, Grass. Okay. I compile Grass, and what I do is just install first all the dependencies and then compile Grass. And it will take the Python there. So until 7.6, compi it compiles with Python 2, and from 7.8 onwards, it compiles with Python 3. Okay. Uh, some people also install it in, with um, these uh, virtual environments or with. Anaconda and things like that, but I really I don't like that. <laughs> I think it's just a mess. I do have a little glitch. I think my system is just having a problem. It's not recognizing even print what Yeah, but maybe that is not for. Maybe, maybe that's not understand. available in Windows. I don't know. But it's not working. But we can see it later. But the, yeah, but this is just to print working directories, yeah. not from Grass. Then I cannot change the working directory to, to work. Then I to anything. Then you will have to provide the path yes, for every file that you create. You provide the path, and then when you execute the code. No, no, but it's not like that. It's what I when mean I is. This, this goes. Yeah. And then you could even execute some of the, the, um, the first. Uh, so uh, then you would need, you would have access to write them. And then the when you go on, then it's, it's, it's just give you, for example, here it doesn't recognize a line. It's no, it's no. It's the thing is, I told you before, you have to remove this. Yes, I remove it. I remove it each time I remove it. But it's not no, no, but create, no, create a, a one liner. Because Windows does not accept uh, separate lines. 
So just remove that and create a one liner. Yes, all in a one line. Yeah, yeah. So we we specifically ask the developer, please ask, add the suffix option, and because it's much convenient. Okay. <clears throat> Then we run that command. We can add for info now. So we do T info. Okay. And now we have Celsius value. So we can get an idea of what kind of temperatures we are talking about. Okay. <clears throat> Good. And what we can do that is very nice, we can do through command line or also interactively from the GUI. And here there's another thing that you should remove in this command. So I think you, so from here, all this you should remove in 7.4. Only the first two lines. And for the, those having 7, 6, you can run it, and you will get a plot, a time series plot, for that pixel, like this. With this tool, no, but there are tools for that, yes. Just I wrote them in the presentation indeed. So I, I go back to that in a moment. Okay, so you get this. And you can query interactively as well. So if we go to the GUI, okay, and we go to temporal here in the main menu, Okay, GUI tools, the last one, GUI T plot. Okay, we get the same window as before. We just need to check which time series we want. So the Celsius that we just created. And then we just go to, the, to this arrow. Okay, we click over that one and then we can like select pixels in the map, okay? And then we run draw. No, it is, a, it is in an enhancement request, <laughs> and, but the developer only reached um, so far the, the use of a polygon, but only to estimate a average, I think. And we wanted everything, like, I don't know, mean and max and so, but it's not yet there. But it's already in a feature request. Maybe you can like, hey guys, <laughs> ping. <laughs> yeah, because it would be really cool. <clears throat> so you can just check different pixels and draw, and then you see how the time series looks like around, like in different gradients or things like that, okay? Um, Yeah, so I go back to the presentation, and here you have the command, okay? So for a single point, you an interactive, you can do this, but if you have a vector of points, then you can use t rest what, and for every point, it will give you the time series. And then you can take that to auto. But you can also export like the full, the full stack. Um, I go to the GUI. So you can also export like the full map as an X, Y, T, something <laughs> like a big matrix. Uh, and I think it's called T Rust Out X Y Seed. And so you get everything. 
If you want to then maybe reconstruct the cube in R or in Python, you get a CSV with everything. You go to the GUI here, temporal, GUI tools, temporal plot. Okay, first you have to select the time series, so the Celsius one, and then you press over the arrow, you click over the arrow, mark a pixel anywhere, and draw. Um, yeah, it does not make the most beautiful plots in the world. <laughs> um, you can have it here, like change the margins and things like that, and add labels, so the title, the X and Y, and then you can save it. But it's just a simple time series plot. Oops. Okay, um, let's move on. <laughs> so um, this one is just to show you that there are different ways of listing. Some we already saw. So this T list allows us to list both time series as well as maps with time time. Okay, um, and we could we can also search like. Um, T list rasters where the the um, the time goes like I don't know from the 2015 May until 2017 May and things like that. We have possibilities of selecting as well, and the same uh, with T rust list and T vec lists. Okay, so these are specific for already created time series, both of raster and vectors. Um, and they have this where parameter in which we can search, okay? And here I will show you some examples, okay? So for example, I want to list the Celsius um, time series. I want it ordered by minimum value, okay? I want the name, the start time, and the minimum value. But I only want to see those maps in which the minimum is below five degrees. Okay, and so then I get only those maps. Yeah, the same I can do with the maximum or with dates, like intervals. I can define intervals with dates. So I want to see now where the start time is higher than May 15 and lower than, May, than August 15. And so I just get those months. Higher equal, lower equal in this case. <clears throat> or I can do this kind of more specific selections, and this will then be useful for these long-term averages, these climatology type averages. And this, okay, I want all those maps whose, which start time which month of start time is one. So what do I want? January, okay? And then I only get the maps for January, okay? <clears throat> so this kind of listing, and this specifically this where parameter, is, in, is there in many other of the time series modules. And so it allows to run uh, processes with selections of time series, okay? <clears throat> now, let's go to temporal aggregation, okay? As I told you before, we have like at least three different types of aggregations. One is we do the full time series aggregation by default, and we use this command, TRAS series. Um, we can also do like, a, let's say, partial aggregation, so we, we select a part of the time series. But importantly, the input is a time series and the output is a single map. Okay? 
So this is equivalent to these time reducers in GDAL cubes. Okay. And there are different methods available, like average, minimum, maximum, median, etc. So what we will do is to get then the maximum and the minimum LSD in the in in the period that we are studying. Okay, 15 to 17. Let's go to the code. <clears throat> So we get minimum, maximum, and minimum. Okay. We can display them. Okay, for example, that's the maximum. And you can also search for the minimum. Okay. And now for Sorry? Yeah. The temperature you are tracking, this is an HDC to maximum. So what you're displaying now is the one minute. Yes. The yes. So here so I input a time series, and the output is just a map. And you select which, which method. So it's three basic parameters in this TRA series. The input is a time series, or a selection of a time series. The output is one map, and the method. The time series. It's a reducer in time. Yes, if you want to see statistics like in space or um, aggregations in space, that would, would be equivalent to get like a universe statistics for each map. No? And for that, there's this command, trust univar. And we pass, let's say we do this. Uh, don't be scared now. <laughs> but basically what you get, this is not the best representation in the screen, but basically you get, so the name of the map, start and end time, and then you get the mean value for that map, okay. and so on. Wow. And that is in space, I mean it's for the whole map. Yes. It's the maximum it, of the mean values. No. It's the, no. It's the, it's the maximum pixel per pixel in time. Per pixel in time. So if the, if like this. Uh, so let's do this. I go to the time series. OK. <clears throat> so, if I ask for the maximum of that pixel, it will search among these values, which one is the maximum, probably this one, and yeah. that's the value it will put yeah. for that pixel. No, because it's always pixel-based. It will always process the whole, all the pixels in a map. So the single maximum pixel of, those of each of each time series. Mm, okay. So you have to think like the cube, no? Mm. So you have all this map, but it has a temporal dimension, mm. okay? And in that temporal dimension is that it searches for the maximum in each pixel. Yes. So but the result is one map, and yeah. the one map that contains the pixel that is the maximum of those. Yeah, the maximum value for each pixel in time. Okay. <coughs> no, okay, so okay. It's, it's not one of the maps, it's a new map for each pixel 
Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So you get the history of each pixel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> No, no. Yeah, for if you want statistics like yeah. aggregated in space, then you ask for this Tierrast Univar, which gives you the the space aggregation. Yeah. Let's say. Okay, um, and then what we do is we set a color table. And to make the color, the color tables um, comparable between the two maps, we pass the two maps. So it takes the minimum and the maximum from all the values in these two maps. And then the colors are comparable. OK. <clears throat> and we can use, for example, um, GUI map swipe to display those maps. And we will compare, for example, uh, let's say the minimum temperature with elevation. Okay. Hello. Oh, yeah. Okay, so clearly the elevation map has higher resolution. Okay, but we see that the lower it is, the less cold it is. So it's colder in the mountains, which is expected. It's not rocket science, <laughs> but uh, this is a nice tool, especially to compare like two, um, yeah, two moments in time. Uh, I don't know, when there's a flooding or when there was something like that, then you can compare both images and see how it was before. The two, ah, the tool is called GUI Map Swipe, and this is the command I run. You can also call it from the from the GUI, and it is here in File Map Swipe. Okay. Good. Um, I move on so we can Okay. <laughs> now the other thing, the other command that is also quite powerful is this T Rust map calc. It's a wrapper around the raster uh, calculator of GrassGIS, but it does it for the temporal uh, dimension, okay? And it also allows for spatial and temporal operators. Um, and it has different temporal variables. Like, like the same that is available as temporal variables for TRUST algebra, is available here for TRUST map calc. And what we will do is to get which is the month of the maximum LST, okay? So we just g got before one map which is the maximum LST in a period of three years for each pixel. But now we, we are interested in knowing when that maximum happened, okay? And so for that, we use this TRUST map calc, and basically we provide the input um, time series, we provide a name for an output time series, and what we will do with the expression is if the monthly time series in Celsius is equal, the value is equal to the maximum temperature map that we already obtained, keep the start month, keep the month, okay? Otherwise, put null. So the time series that we will get out of this is basically a time series that will have a lot of nulls, but it will only have values where the map in the time series, 
in the pixels of the map in the time series that coincides with the map of the maximum LST that we just obtained. Okay? <clears throat> and then, only then, because that is not really useful information, no? We have a time series full of nulls and only data is spread around or sparsed. What we do then is aggregate that time series to only get month. So it will be a map, and the values in the map will be the month of the maximum LST in three years. Okay? So, let's run this one. One second. Okay. I have opened the, this one. You have to close it. What do you mean? This is a, a raster time series. Yes, you can do that with R series. So if you know that your, your maps represent time, what you can do is just use R series. Yeah, it works, but only for maximum and minimum. And what you will get instead of date is the index of that map in the list. I that. That's what I want. So if you get like if you pass a list of maps yeah. and you know that they represent time or whatever they represent, you can ask for the mean rust or max rust, mm -hmm. and that will give you uh, pixel wise the index of the map where the minimum value is of all the series that you pass or where the maximum value is. Right. But it's index-based. Then if it, that represents um, dates, you can then like reclassify that raster. Like, okay, this index is equal to this date, this index equal to this date, and then you reclassify the raster. Right. So... After this TRAS map calc sentence, then what we do is a TRAS series. And here again, so we pass the time series that we just created, and we will get only one map. Okay? And since there can be occasions in which the maximum occurred twice, for example, in the same pixel time series, I will just keep the earliest month, okay? And that's why, as method, I keep the minimum, okay? <clears throat> now, uh, and this other command is just to remove this intermediate time series that we created, the one that has a lot of nulls. I mean, it's not useful where we were interested in the map, so we can remove. And we remove not only the time series, but all the maps in the time series, okay? That's why the R and F flags. That means recursively, and force the removal. Okay, and now let's visualize. Uh, tuk -tuk. Let's visualize the, t the raster that we just created with the months. It was called max LST date. Okay, so we will go to the GUI. From here we add a raster map. We can paste the, the name there directly and apply. Okay, and we will add a legend just to know. 
Okay, by default, it writes there the name of the map that you are act that you have active here. Apply, and by default, it does like this. But you can right click and say resize, and then we can get something nicer, kind of nicer. Okay, so we can see that values go from April till September for the maximum LST. Then if that makes sense or not, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know North Carolina, but <clears throat> at least in the mountains, the, the maximums seems to occur a bit later. Okay. <clears throat> but again, if you click, uh, with this one, you can query the map, and so here you can see the values. Okay, I'm just clicking over the same values all the time. Okay, good. Um, what was there in the slides was is the way to um, plot a map from the terminal. So from the terminal, if you don't use regularly the GUI, from the terminal, you can open a monitor and start adding maps and decorators to that monitor. Um, and so this is the example that is there in the slides. I will just um, follow it just to show you. The name of the monitor can be anything. The name of the monitor goes from zero to nine. So it's WX zero and to till nine. So it must be WX. WX, yes. One, two, three. So you can have ten monitors open. Uh, no. No. Ah, I'm making a mess here. Demon. Yeah, if, exactly. If you have only one, it will send it to the one that you have. Otherwise, you have to say which monitor. So we display first the raster map. Then we can add a vector map. Um, we can add also from here the legend. Okay, and let's check how it looks like so far. Okay, then this, all these things are like, you can move them, okay? So then scale bar, north arrow, and a title. No. Paste. Okay. Okay, so now we can just order them a bit. Resize the legend. Okay. And we have our map. Okay, so if you are not working with the GUI and you just work with command line, from there you can just visualize how your maps, how your resulting maps are looking like. Good. Okay. Now, this is the second type of aggregation that we were mentioning before. And this aggregation is based on granularity. Okay? So, we have a monthly time series, but we want, we want now the average per season. Okay? So, this command allows us to aggregate by granularity. And again, we have different methods available, the same as for T-Rust series are available for T-Rust aggregate. <clears throat> and the command looks like this. So we input a time series, and here the output will be a time series. Okay? Not as before that we got only one map, but since we are aggregating with granularity, we will get a time series out of it. Okay, so we input a monthly time series and we will output a seasonal time series. 
okay, a three month time series. We then provide the base name. Again, this suffix grant is to get the year and month at the end of the name of the maps. We say that the method is the average and the granularity is three months. Okay. Let's run this one. Good. Uh, let's do a T info. Okay, and now we see that the values here have changed because they are averages, like three month averages. And instead of 36 maps, we have 12 maps. Okay. <clears throat> and here we see. the list of maps, okay? Yeah, and now you see that the granularity is then three months, okay? And this is how the name, the naming look, looks like. Good. What we can do with this is make an animation, okay? The name is the name of the first month. Of the period, yes. So for also from command line, we can call this tool animation, okay? And we just need to provide the name of the space-time time series, the space-time data set. Okay, and we run. Okay. It's pretty easy to, to make animations. And then from here, you can add certain decorations and you can export as a GIF or as an image sequence or AV file and such. You can change also the velocity, like here, if it goes too fast, then here we can put, I don't know, maybe 150 for each map, okay. See, and it goes slower. Okay. Any of those steps have legends? You cannot put a legend yet, but you can add a vector from here. Okay, you can add vector and you can set you can edit the layer properties, set transparency, and change the order of the layers. And what you can also add, no, not this one, oh. Here, before exporting, you have a tab for decorations, and you can add the timestamp, you can add a title, or, and you can add an image. Say you have, I don't know, a logo that you want to add, or something like that. Legend so far is, I think I created a ticket for <laughs> Legend. <laughs> but, yeah. It's like a, a, re, a feature request or something. If you want to do it yourself, yeah. you need to write code in C or, or in Python? What is the um, I think this is Python. Ah. Because it's the, the GUI is WX Python. If you want to write a method, you can do in Python or in C. <clears throat> okay, let's move. Um, now we will see this. Um, let's go to the presentation. That looks nice. Okay. For example, in this one, I, I worked a little bit harder <laughs> and I put the timestamp and a title. Okay. And this one we will skip. And now there's this other type of aggregation. So we just, what we just did is this granularity aggregation, right? But let's see now how to aggregate, to create these long-term averages or 
climatology-like aggregations, okay? And with this, we go back to this listing example that I showed you before. Remember this, this sentence here, in which we use, we want all the maps with start with month of the start time being January, okay? So now, we put this same sentence inside TRAST series command, which also has a WHERE parameter, okay? And so, before running this time series, the command will just select the maps that we want, and it will make the average, because this is the method that we are asking. And out of it, we just get one map. Okay? But that's only for January. What about, what if we want to create these long-term averages per month? Okay? So, we just make a cycle. Okay? For all the months, from January to December. Okay? And we just replace here the month and in the name. So then we know which month it corresponds to. Okay, and that's if you, yes, that's shell syntax, and this is how it looks in Windows. So it's it's the same, no? It's just changing in syntax. This for this uh, uh, developer that uses Windows helped me because I just don't know how to write it. So he contributed the the example for this, and it's basically the same. So you create the list here, and then you say do what and you replace, instead of month, as I have written before, this C, you put it here and in the name. Okay, so let list now these maps, because these maps won't be a time series, okay? Because out of TRAS series, we just get maps. They are not registered in, the, in, a, an, in a time series. So we can list them with glist, okay, type raster pattern e. uh, it was something average something okay so I remember that the name has had average in between in the middle and so the stars are just something or anything and anything, okay? And of course I had more <laughs> maps with that pattern, okay? But we are mostly interested in this, okay? <clears throat> so this is useful, for example, when you then want to estimate these bioclimatic variables. Um, those that were here yesterday, we did this same procedure, but to also get a long-term minimum per month and long-term maximum per month. And with that, we estimated bioclimatic variables as in work clean. <clears throat> Oops. Um. Okay. Uh, I will go faster now so we can just finish. And we get to see like the R part as well. Okay. The next step is the anomalies. The standardized anomalies. And for that, we need to estimate the overall average of the series and the overall standard deviation of the series. 
and the average per year, the yearly average, okay? And then we make the difference. Each year, how it is with respect to the overall average, average and with respect to the variability in that series, okay? And for this, these are commands that we already used, no? So TRAS series, we ask for the average, and with that we get the average of the, of the full series. We ask for the standard deviation, and like that we had the standard deviation of the whole series, so we are getting only one map here. And then we use the TRAS aggregate, which uses granularity, to get the yearly averages, okay? And so we use granularity one year, and we get a yearly time series. In this case, three maps, okay? One per year. <clears throat> uh, okay, we can now do the rust list of this one. And there you see these only three maps, but it's a time series, yearly time series with the mean temperature. Okay? Now, to estimate the anomalies, To estimate the anomalies, we again use the algebra, okay? And here we provide the name for the output time series. The yearly uh, mean temperature, and we create just, we recreate the equation, okay? So each map of this time series minus the average of the full time series, we have to specify that this is not a time series, but just a map here. And the same for the standard deviation in the denominator, okay? Because we are not comparing time series against time series, but time series with a map. Okay, so each map in this time series with this map and this map, okay? That's why we add this. Yeah, TRAS map calc, I think it was like the like the, the first implementation of some kind of algebra and it it is based in R map calc. So it's like a wrapper, okay? And so it does not really have idea of the temporal dimension. It just goes around lists of maps, okay? And and it matches uh, but it does not really have idea of the like the topology and the topological relationships and, and such. That's why for more complex operations or to always be sure that the things will be parsed correctly, uh, it's better to use the algebra. <clears throat> so... Sorry? Yes, but you would need to do a four, a cycle. So for each map in this time series of three maps, uh, subtract this and divide by this one. And to see this one, let's create an animation. We first can set the color table. So the same way we used R colors for one map or two maps, we can use T RAS colors for a whole time series, okay? And then from the metadata, it gets the minimum and maximum values, and then all the maps are comparable in terms of color table. <clears throat> okay. 
done. And let's create an animation quickly. Okay. We will change the velocity to something like 300. Okay. And there we see. So for blue is negative anomalies, for red is positive anomalies. Of course, for three years, this doesn't really make much sense, but that's the operations uh, that we can do. Okay, for environmental monitoring, if you are monitoring how the temperature is changing or uh, in NDVI as well, or whatever variable you have. Okay. And now I have to close this one. Yes. Yes, because here we are comparing a time series with a single map. So by default, the algebra would take time series to make the operations, okay? But here is a time series, which in this case contains three maps, and each one of those should be related to this map, this single map, and this single map. So you have to specify that that's a single map and not the name of a time series. Otherwise, it would search for a name of a time series. And it wouldn't find, and it, wouldn't find it, of course. Yeah. Good. Let's do super quickly. <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah. Yes. What? Yes. That's the next step. But I just wanted to introduce this concept of uh, urban heat islands. So it's, I think you all know that uh, above and surrounding a city, always the temperature is, uh, is higher, okay? And this phenomenon is called uh, urban heat island. Okay, because it's pretty different from the surrounding rural areas. And the problem is with this heat island is that it has negative effects on water and air quality because it keeps like all the contaminants and things like that right there over the city. Also effects on biodiversity and on human health. Okay. Especially, I mean, always the most affected people is the elderly or the, the babies, no? the, the children. And since we are using LST, we are not talking about the air temperature, but we are talking about the surface heat island, okay? That somehow also influences the, the air above it, okay? But we have to be clear which kind of temperature variable we are using. <clears throat> so with this excuse, we will uh, extract the zonal statistics for an urban area in North Carolina and also the zonal statistics in the time series for the surroundings of this city. Okay? And we will only select the summertime because it's where this urban heat line and high uh, sorry <laughs> where this urban urban heat island is mostly uh, manifested. Okay? So for that, we will use an extension called vstrudstats. <laughs> uh, so it's, we get zonal statistics out of a raster time series into the attribute table of a vector map of polygons. Okay. <clears throat> Good. So for that, we need to install that extension. I hope it works for everyone because in Windows we were having some issues before. For example, I am getting some issues. 
uh, it seems I'm not connected. You. Okay, I'm not connected, but I have the add-on anyway. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason I'm not connected, so I cannot do that again. Um, okay. Then we will extract only for summer. Okay. First, let's show this. Okay, so remember we created this seasonal time series, no? For the summer months are those starting with seven, okay, for July. So July, uh, August, and September, okay? And that's what we will pass to this command, okay, to the add-on. So we input a vector which is a collection of polygons for the different urban areas in North Carolina, okay? Then we, the other input is the space-time raster data set, the seasonal one. But we don't want to extract the, the zonal statistics for all the urban areas in North Carolina, but only for Rayleigh. okay? So that's where we use this where. And this where is for the vector. But also, we don't want the 12 maps in the seasonal time series, but we only want the summer months, okay? And so, we use this t wear, so a temporal wear, in which we select the uh, month of start time is 7, is July, okay? Representing the summer maps. What do we want to extract? Well, we want the spatial average in time. Okay, we can also ask for other methods, okay? For now, we will just keep the average. And what we get is a vector that will only contain this polygon, and it will contain three columns for each one of the, uh, of the maps of summer, okay? Now, I show you quickly how it looks like. The DB select, and it was called okay. And so here we have the three temperatures that we extracted. Okay, it's spatially aggregated in time. <coughs> Now, to extract the information of the surroundings of the city, what I do, this is more like vector work, um, I create two buffers, like a 30 kilometer buffer around the city, and then a 15 kilometer buffer around the city, and then I just make a subtraction between these two to get a ring, okay? <clears throat> so, I do this with B buffer. I create the two buffers. Okay. And then I just remove one from the other with B overlay. Okay. And first, let's see how that looks like. Okay, so in the end, I would end up with something like this. And after that, what I do is extract. So I already extracted the zonal statistics for the urban area. So then I extract the zonal statistics for the ring surrounding the urban area. And it is, again... A command with the extension that we installed. Okay, and we can also display this one. OK. 
Okay, so here we have the three temperatures for summer in the surroundings of the city. Then is, if these differences are then meaningful or not, that's another story, of course. And for sure we could also have, for example, studied if in this surrounding there were other urban areas because that would affect our estimation, of course. So we would have need to mask them, for example, just to avoid considering them in the, in the zonal statistics. But for this exercise, I think it's okay as an example. <clears throat> okay, so the next step is moving to R. And I can show you just quickly. So there's the link to the code if you then want to follow. I just try to show you quickly. The idea is that from Grass we can uh, call R Studio and the sessions get connected. And so there we can just plot nicely these vectors, okay? Um, so I just type this. I just type RStudio here, okay? If I only type RStudio, I lose the, the prompt, the command prompt, so I use this one, okay, the AND. And then if I go back to grass, I still have my command prompt, so I can still do something here, no? <clears throat> and the first thing I need to do here, of course, is install the package and afterwards um, just loading it. It's the rgrass7 package. Okay? And um, I will increase this. Uh, to, to, to. Can I do this? No. Edit view. Mean. Okay, doesn't look very nice. Okay, and you can see that the, w the moment you load the library, the, you get the, the metadata from the, from the grass session, okay? <clears throat> so let me open this here. Okay, I will just copy from the other one because to avoid losing time. This one. Okay, basically uh, I run, I load the library. I also load the simple features library. <clears throat> because I want my vectors, my imported vectors as simple feature and not, not as SP objects. And like this, I can just rust, I can just run commands from R. Okay, run grass commands from R. So I just say exec grass. Okay, and what I get is the list of vector maps here. Okay, then what I do is saying use simple features, and I import the two vectors that we just created in grass. Okay, we can quickly display them. Map view. Ah, I didn't load the library, okay. So, but let's go again. And the name was, for example, this one. Okay, so There we have, for example, the urban area. Ah, I'm not connected. Otherwise, you would see the base map below. Yeah, I don't know why I'm not online. <clears throat> okay, then I just do some data massage. I remove some columns I don't want from the two vectors. Hello. Since they are just data frames now, I just can remove and paste again and so. Then I paste the two vectors together just to have a single vector map. Okay, and then I can just plot. And I show you this one with simple features only. And 
Okay. And I get something like this. You. Okay. So to do this in grass, is, it takes a lot of time, but just importing it into R is quite simple, and then you can use the plotting engine of, of R, which is super. So he, this one is with simple features, but I also developed some example using uh, ggplot, which in my opinion looks nicer. So you just load those libraries, <clears throat> and then you have to go th um, from wide format into long format. If you have used ggplot, you know that you always have to go to the long format of table. <clears throat> this is the last I, I show you, I promise. Oops. Okay, now we have our table properly formatted. Uh, I replace the name of these maps by just the year to avoid this long name. And the next thing is just plotting, okay, with ggplot. And it looks much nicer. Yeah, to a simple feature. For vectors, you can now, uh, thanks to Roger, use simple features. I mean, either simple features or SP. I prefer simple features. And for raster objects, you will still get a spatial grid or something like that. Uh, but you can rasterize. Then you rasterize that spatial grid and you get a raster object. And the idea is to then, for raster, directly get, for raster data in grass, directly get a stars object in R. Uh, that's li like the next step for Argras 7, uh, where Roger and Etzer are involved. And so, yeah, with this, I just conclude. <laughs> de -de -de -de. So you can then follow. I, I just developed some more examples, but yeah. Uh, yes, always your questions. <laughs> Um, to export the full-time series, yeah, um, uh, let me search for it. I think it was T Rust out X Y Z. Uh, I'm not connected. Just search for that. <laughs> T Rust. Uh, we can search it here. I don't remember if that's an add-on actually. T Rust out. No, yeah, it's an add-on because I don't have it here. This is a different thing. Uh, X, no. Yeah, it's an add-on. But just type, I think it was all together like this. Or maybe with a point. Should look something like this. I'm, I don't have internet today. And, and you get like a huge matrix. So I leave you here again all the other links for useful resources, references, and thank you very much, guys. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Sorry for stepping over the lunchtime.